Welcome back to the Wisdom Factory and our series on the archetypes and the soul with Marion Lockhart. We have already done uh, two sections. One was about the soul roles and the other one was the beginning of the soul ages. And we have come to almost all ages, but the interesting old soul age, we couldn't get into it anymore because it's just too long and too interesting what Mayon has to tell us. So we decided to do an extra session on the old souls and you will find the same on the same page, you will find the video. And if you watch on YouTube, you need to come to the wisdomfactory.net slash Mayon Lockett and um, you will find her things there. Okay, we have also, by the way, done the same thing more or less in German. So if you are not so happy with English, you can have it in German. Now, immediately I give over to you. You have prepared another presentation and I'm so curious about it because I know because of you that I am an old soul. And so I want to learn a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. hello everybody. Hello you. Uh, I'm glad to uh, talk about the old souls today um, because I think that uh, many of you who are listening to us today uh, are old souls. Perhaps you will find out something about it. Okay, so I will start my presentation. Wait a second. Here we are. Yeah. So the last time we uh, talked about the young souls and we talked about the mature souls and um, what their challenges are, what their needs are. And today it's about the old soul. Um, by the way, before I start, um, I should say that being an old soul uh, is not a privilege. Mm, old souls are, aren't anything better than mature souls or child souls or infant souls. Um, they are all perfect as they are, but they have different needs and they have different, different claims. And that's what we're talking about today. So, Old souls, that tasks are about living once individually. Ind individuality, sorry. Um, when you, let's, uh, um, let's have a look at the biological old age. So if you imagine you are about 70 or 80 years old, um, the world fades a little bit. You get more concentrated on yourself and perhaps you are not so eager to cope with the world's matters and you're not so... Um, uh, mm, you don't feel so much anymore to be accepted by others the way you live. And that is comparable to the old soul during the, their whole lives. You know, um, we, you are born with your soul age and um, a child who is an old soul is a different child to a child that is a young soul or a mature soul. Mm, old souls like to be individual and they like to do what they feel and what they think they have to do, mm, no matter if uh, the other persons, the family, or the people with whom you live, accept that or agree to that. 
Mm, the world's matters are not so close anymore. Mm, you might be interested in uh, political things also, but mm, you won't go to, uh, perhaps you, you won't, you don't want to fight for it so much. And you could say being an old soul is more and more less about doing, but more of being. We, we do live in a society um, where doing means so much. And for an old soul, you more and more feel that um, your energy has an impact as well and has a um, do something. So when an old soul uh, enters a room, the frequency changes a bit. Old souls often feel misunderstood. Mm. And that is right. <laughs> they are misunderstood very often because if you, um, if we switch over to the biological age again, um, it's very clear that an eight year old person has other needs and an other mindset, a different mindset than an 80 year old person. And um, as an 80 year old person, you can't describe many things you yourself feel. And that is similar to an old soul. Um, your insights, your feelings, your capability of loving is, uh, has increased. And so um, you think very different about several things in life. And the others often can't cope with that and don't understand it. Yeah, here yeah, I want to come in. I think that's exactly right. They can't understand it. Because if you think there is a parallel to spiral dynamics and integral theory, you know, that uh, you end up in different levels of development. And there they say, when you're in a further level of development, you have done all the developments before. And so you know them. But when you are on the one of the first steps of development, you have no idea how the others, the, what is coming later, will be, and so you can't understand it. And I imagine that there's something like that, that an old soul has done so many lives and lived the things which the previous souls do, and so they know it already in some way, while the younger souls, they have no idea what it will be about later when they are doing this. Is it so? Yeah, you're, you're exactly, exactly right. Um, old souls, if you compare it to the spiral dynamics, the, um, the levels, um, it's, uh, the old soul starts with, with level um, yellow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, as, I, as far as I know, the yellow level is the um, first level at second tier. Um, so it's the first level who is able to, um, to worship the other levels and the, um, the potentials of the other levels, um, whether up to the green level, it's uh, you, you more look down to the other levels. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the yellow level is the first level who is able to um, yeah, to see embrace, to, hmm? embrace, to embrace all the other levels, right? Because right. there are parts in us who are, are part of these other levels, 
and we include them and we can see it in other people and we don't need to be angry on them because they are on the level that they are. There's always this, this example, which you said, for instance, also that you cannot blame in some way, you said it, an eight-year-old for not being an 80-year-old because they are just different, you know? <laughs> and you won't, you won't talk uh, with him about Tantra. No. <laughs> So this is very important to understand that it is a developmental thing and not a moral or, or thing in terms of good or bad. Nothing yep. of right. only of heightened understanding possibility. The more you grow as an individual in the world or as the soul by several lives you are doing, the more you grow in that, the more understanding and capability of uh, yeah, understanding the, the, all the levels before you have. Yeah. And that's one reason why old souls often feel alone. And on the other hand, they love being alone. They couldn't bear it if they were surrounded all the time by family or friends or so. Um, they need to um, retire a bit, li a little bit, and yeah, be for yourself. And uh, if you are an old soul, you feel more and more connected to, let's say, the the other worlds, mm -hmm. uh, the spiritual worlds. Yeah, like and often happens in normal life, no, in in human life. That the older you grow, the the more you even many people have been atheists and then they come nearer to the older mm -hmm. age and then they they get some sort of spirituality. But I wanted also to say for feeling alone and love being alone, especially an old soul, now I can understand it with this terminology, doesn't want to be around young souls who are, come on, let's do this, let's do that, let's, oh, why don't you do that? You should do that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and as, as the mature souls um, care about very many things, things which is really helpful, um, they feel so much responsible for everything. And an old soul, if you're an old soul, you don't, uh, you, you aren't so eager to uh, engage yourself uh, in political or social matters anymore. Because the, the world, yeah, is a bit more and more far away from you. Yeah, and I want to add, and as uh, from my own experience, and if you do, if you try to to be like younger uh, souls, let's say, it's always like a burden. Like, oh, I have to do that. Oh, it's always tiring. It's not really helping you to expand your natural energy, but it's more sort of real burden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and um, often. Even um, earning your money is a, like a burden for an old soul. Ah, it's also exhausting. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, having to do things for money is a burden. Mm. We like to do things which we can do, like I do this with you. But if I needed to go out and ask money and create a business out of it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's mention the, the point of uh, individuality again. Um, uh, in, in former times, I thought that old souls must be uh, lovely and nice every time and every day. And I thought, uh, I had the idea that um, the older a soul is, the 
the more full of love and um, yeah, uh, acceptance it is. That is not the fact. That is not the matter. Mm, old souls often are hmm, not so easy to handle. And that has to do something um, with the, the need to express your individuality and to um, everything that matters is if it is right for you and it is to express what is in you without compromise. And that makes old souls, yeah, not very easy to, to handle or to be with sometimes. What are your experiences about that, Heidi? I can only talk about me now understanding that I'm an old soul. I can now understand why my family is not really looking out for me and because I'm always bringing up different things. I'm not, I'm not like in a sheep uh, in flock, you know, I always say different things, provo provoking things and so on. And they, they don't want that. So <laughs> not only my family, but often it's, it's hard to find people where you can express yourself without coming across like somebody hostile or somebody offensive. We uh, individual souls, we just want to explore things. And by we do that by, by controversy, by not controversy in this sense, but by trying to challenge mm -hmm. certain uh, ideas or views and try to collaborate and find a better, a better answer to questions. Mm -hmm. And when you are not an old soul, this is challenging for these people because they want to have secure um, ideas which all the others agree on, all the others around them. So you are in danger to be a li little bit left out. But as you are not so dependent on it, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so old souls get inconvenient. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> To whom is the question? To, to the ones who are also all souls, maybe not, but to, to the ones who expect you to be in a certain way, yes, then we do. And I remember even as children, you know, I, I, they always told me that I have my own ideas and that I should blah, 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 blah. You know, that uh, shows up um, very early in life. So that's a good news for who has felt always to be somehow not belonging to the family, that maybe it's not your fault, but it's just because you have a different age, soul age. Yeah. And as you are an old soul, you are different. Yeah. And you can't be really understood. Yeah, that's right. Maybe not by somebody, but not by the masses of people. Some, some will understand you, uh, you or me, no, you are old soul too. Mm -hmm. So there are people who can understand you, but the majority of people just don't, just don't get what you want. And on the other hand, uh, the capability of loving increases indeed. Um, because... Um, it's something like your heart widens. Um, you see on things with a wider horizon, you can say so, as an old soul. Let's have a look on the, um, on the learning steps in the old soul cycle, okay? Ready for that? Yes. So we have seven steps again. And the first steps, the first step is act against conventional morals from inner conviction. So 
to, to learn to be really individual, you have to free yourself from um, the, the claims of the society. And you have to find your own moral. And that is what the first step in the old soul cycle is about. You have to find out what is your inner moral. What are your ideas? What is right to you? It is not so much about fighting about the um, moral of the, of the society or the conventional moral. Um, it's not about fighting. Um, if you have a look at the energy of old soul step one, it's the combination of um, sage energy and healer energy. It's not about warrior. So it's a very um, sensitive or sensible uh, step. Mm, these, this first step in the old soul age um, is very special because of one fact. The life before was on mature level seven. And as you perhaps remember, mature level seven is a very powerful age. It's about uh, showing everything you have learned in the mature cycle. And on level mature seven, very many things come to success, you do. And now it's a bit, and now entering the first step of the old soul cycle is about, is a bit like um, with mature seven, you ended college and you feel very proud and powerful and so on. And you say, yes. In German, you would say, Abitur 2020. <laughs> and now you're coming to the university and you are a youngster. Oh my God, everything is different here. A few moments before you were like this and now it's... <sighs> And uh, so the first step in every cycle is fragile. It's like uh, trying and searching and experimenting and so on, experiencing. Yeah. And that's uh, why many of the people who are in old soul age, step one, are uh, um, yeah a bit cautious. <laughs> yeah, and it's also difficult not to keep to separate yourself from the morals of everyone around and stay with what you have understood is right and wrong, and you know mm -hmm. try to formulate it first for yourself and have the whole. Uh, people with the whole power of the previous uh, morals against you. No, that's, 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 yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and as you know, um, a soul um, stays two to four lives on one step. So you have time to experience uh, the claims and the learnings. 
So the second step is about admiring yourself honestly while dispensing the admiration of others. And in the first lives of level two, mm, you have to learn to admire yourself by taking so much um, applause and uh, admiration as you can. Mm, because for many people, as you know, it is not so easy to admire yourself or admire oneself. Mm, it's important to, to be aware of that admiring is something different than uh, um, Oh, has nothing to do with being good at something. It's not about doing. Admiring is more um, understandable if you think about looking at yourself as a wonder. You are a wonder. As you are, as the person you are, as the energy you are. It's not about that you have done um, fine things. It's admiring yourself because you are yourself. And on the, on the later lives of step, of step two, um, it often comes to the point um, that others really look down on you. Perhaps you are mobbed or, yeah. Um, come in situations um, where others mistrust you, look down on you, um, leave you and so on. And it's about keeping the feeling of admiration to yourself no matter what the others think. So at the first step, we had the, uh, that inner um, conviction. Um, in relationship to the other people, the society, and now it's getting personal. And the admiration to yourself has to um, be planted deep in you. Any idea about that, Heidi? No, I, I just was thinking all the time, in some way, this, what you talk about the lives, you also might be living in your own life on the earth in some way. The, the um, I was thinking about the conventional morals. I remember very, very well the, the day and the deed, what I did, which was against the conventional moral, because I said, I do that. Also, nobody will agree with what I'm doing, you know? And so in some way, <laughs> it seems to me at this point that in our lives here, we sort of fast track what we have learned in the previous lives, in the previous stages. So that's You're right. interesting. Admiring yourself is honesty. Um, yeah. Dispensing the admiration of others. That was a hard thing to, to learn for me, you know, but I recognize that in my life now, I sort of managed to do that. <laughs> yeah. And as you know, as I'm in number three, I have that behind me not so long ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, coming to the, to the third step. It's about a combined precise introspection with impactful actions. So this 
third step is a bit special uh, in the old cycle because here with the combination of sage energy and warrior energy, it is about doing as well. Um, you and me, we are both step three. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's about more and more show your inner world to the others actively um, without compromise. And no matter if you, if somebody feels hurt about that or nobody, if uh, somebody um, dislike that or so, no matter what, you have to show, to show your inner world and get your inner world into the outer one. Yeah. Exactly. And that's also one of the reasons, I guess, which I understood later why I'm doing these things which I'm doing, no? like the interviews and conversation groups and everything, because and, and I don't want to be an interviewer who is just reading questions, but I want also to express what what's my ideas. And that's why I say these are conversation and not really interviews. So we are mm -hmm. both three, so we, we match well together. Yeah. Yeah. The fourth step is unite your well-being with the welfare of the community. Here we are in the middle of the old soul cycle. It is sage energy, energy with um, scholar energy. And um, most of the step four people I know um, because had become already fragile. You can feel that they, their soul is really old now. And um, if you read here, unite your well-being with the welfare, welfare of the community. Um, the deep learning here is the community can't be really well if you are not well. Mm. Often we had learned, for especially if you are a mat uh, martyr, <laughs> uh, that you have to do something for the community, no matter how the impact is on yourself. You have to sacrifice yourself a bit for the welfare of the community. And now the idea widens. And as you see yourself as a part of the community, it gets clear that if you don't do something good for the community by sacrificing yourself, you are uh, putting down the energy level of the community. And so that is, isn't helpful at all. And perhaps you guess that saying these words is very much easier than living it. Because we are trained um, the other way. Yeah, we would be seen um, selfish, egocentric, and so on when we take ourselves first, you know. But in this context, yeah, it, even, I mean, psychologists for a long time, also young, I think he was the first one who said that if the parents are not happy, the children can't be happy. Mm -hmm. So sacrificing parents 
And for the children, they only give a load and of, of, of guilt uh, on the children because then they feel as if they owe to the parents and they send the constriction. Instead, the easiest thing to make their children happy is to be happy and content themselves. So that means use this uh, strategy of the old soul number four. <laughs> When we're now talking about five, six, and seven, I must say that I don't really know very much about these steps because they are a bit far away. I'm at three and uh, five, six, and seven yeah, are some steps away and I can't really understand them in a very deep level. So it's a bit, uh, theoretical, maybe, if we were talk about, if we are talking about these levels. So the fifth one, I know some people at step five. Um, it's about follow the path unwavering really, without knowing where it leads. So in other in all the other steps of the soul ages, the soul, your soul knows exactly where to go. And this step, Old Soul 5, is the only uh, step where even your soul doesn't know what is the claim or what is the goal. This is interesting because here there is the a, a moment of possibility to change the soul's direction also, no? Mm -hmm. When it gives the open uh, to the, uh, I don't know if it's by chance what happens, but it, it leaves, uh, gets out of a fixed direction and allows uh, serendipity or something to come, to come in and, and direct the soul journey into another direction. That's interesting. Yeah, and so the, the soul family might know uh, where it leads, but uh, the soul doesn't really um, know it. And um, somebody said, it's a bit like if you are going and you're uh, in the moment, your foot Mm, does the next step in that moment the earth gets under it but in in the moment you um while you are um moving you have the feeling like it's the uh it's a canyon before you so you have to go you have to to learn, trust, 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 trust. And you have no choice. You have to let yourself lead by things that are coming. This is an interesting question. You said maybe the soul family is it's knowing the bigger picture, but you, single soul, at this point, you don't know it anymore. Interesting. At level six, at step six, um, it's about act through being, not by doing. Very important step. Yeah, I imagine these gurus who are just sitting in in the in in their in their sangha and transmit by not doing, just by being there. Yeah, energies. Mm -hmm. A very interesting example uh, is also uh, Nelson Mandela, who was an old soul step six. And uh, if you regard his life, if, if you look at his life. It, is, it was very, a, a very short time when he was really active. 
And most of the time he sat in jail and he was there. And he, uh, his being there had a big support and a big impact um, on the people who fought for um, uh, their apartheid. Yeah. Apartheid. So, uh, actually, he was doing, I was, we were there on uh, Robben Island in Cape Town. Ah. And we saw uh, the prisons also where he was, but they had to work in the um, caves mm. to, to get off stones and stuff like this. So they did do, but it's another doing, you know, you don't mean this doing of uh, work. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you have to get up, you have to take a shower, you have to, so. No, they didn't have a shower there, so that <laughs> was really horrible <laughs> place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. Uh, they they transmit, and even there, he probably transmitted his um, energy to the others, no, to he keep up, to keep up to the end of the situation. Yeah, and uh, another thing comes to my mind, which might be uh, important to mention. Um. And that is a difference between the spiral dynamics and the old soul uh, and the soul ages. Um, being an old soul doesn't mean that you are conscious of all these things. It has nothing to do with intelligence and it has nothing to do with knowing. It is about the frequencies you have, or your soul has, and the impact these frequencies have on your personality. So if you have a person on level old six, he might be somebody who is uh, has an IQ IQ of eighty, maybe, and he uh, he is uh, caring for cows or sheep or so, and can't do any um, much more than that. But you, if you encounter such a person you might feel that his energy uh, is really um, uh, like thick <laughs> or um, dicht. Um, yeah, it's, it's strong in some way, you know, I remember there are sometimes in the countryside, you, f you find these people who are, even they don't say a whole lot, but you feel oh, some... Mm -hmm. They glow. Yeah, in some way, it's, I don't know a word for that, maybe an English speaking mother tongue person <laughs> can give us the word for that. It is a special emanation. It's, it's, has something to do with calmness, with being mm -hmm. a sage without knowing it, you know, common sense say, sage or something like that. And about also this embracing thing, yeah. this uh, I'm here, I, I am. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. And maybe it's um, what comes to my mind right now is Perhaps it's a big, like a, like a mixture of very warm energy and cool energy. Cool energy because this kind of energy uh, doesn't expect anything from you. So it feels a bit distant in some way, but in spite of it, it's warm. Yeah, I 
can agree with the person I see in my inner eyes. That's exactly that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the last step it's, is receive without giving and give without receiving. This is probably not easy to understand. <laughs> Um, this last step of the whole incarnation cycle um, shows that giving and taking are can be conscious and can be unconscious. And it's a bit all the same because everything is holistic and whole anyway. I can't tell you much more about level seven because it's very far away from me. Uh, and I hope that this wonderful book, Young Souls, Old Souls uh, by Wada Hasselmann and Frank Schmolke will be translated into English soon. I hope so. So you can all read about all these levels and uh, the meaning of all these levels. Um, to to have a closer look at these levels, I uh, chose some examples again. Persons, and perhaps we can talk about uh, these persons a bit. Okay. So we have an artist, old too. And uh, as you remember, it's about admiring yourself uh, all the same as the others admire you or not. And I think he, he was like that uh, as far as you can hear and read uh, in his letters and so on. And he, he didn't care very much what uh, the society was thinking about him. Uh, he was vain, yes, he was. But um, on the deeper level, uh, this uh, vanity is a um, form of admiring yourself. <laughs> Any comment, Heidi? No, <laughs> I just say yes. That's it's exactly what it is. I have never thought in these terms about him, but mm -hmm. yeah. I would say so. <laughs> yeah, and he, uh, with his music, he, he created so many things that were new uh, to the society and uh, he confronted them with interesting subjects like uh, uh, in, in, in a serai. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, this was uh, Shocking. And he did uh, the magic flute, and he did also uh, um, Figaro's Hochzeit, the Notze di Figaro, which was against uh, the present political system, against uh, the courts and so on. And I also think he behaved like like he wanted to. He didn't he didn't behave like like the, he he should have in this society. He just did, you know. And he knew that he, his music was good, and if the others. You know, who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he he loved to provoke people, and uh, but not not um, in a fighting way, but in a funny way. Yeah, it is was more challenging. No, he wanted to get them out of their limits in some way by being as as he himself was. You know, so yeah. So he, he was quite independent, I think, yeah. Here we have another old two, Anne Frank, a king or a queen, as you can say. 
Um, I don't know if everybody knows Anna Frank. She was a young girl, um, a Jewish young girl um, in Holland who wrote a diary, which is very famous. I think one of the most famous books in the world. Um, and she died in a concentration camp um, during the last days of the war. Yeah. Yeah. And she admired herself as well. And she gave something to the people by this. That might be well, like, like Mozart, um, by the way, also did. Mm. Yeah. And she was with herself on the other hand. If you want to add something, uh, Heidi, just give me a hint. Uh, no, it's fine, go ahead. Did we have some uh, for old one? Did you have an example for old one? No, not, not uh, uh, only persons who are, uh, who are famous in Germany, but not oh. worldwide, I think. And so I left them out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we have a priest, all three. You all know, I think everybody who, who's looking at this video knows Ken Wilber. A priest, mm -hmm. impatience with arrogance is his uh, fear, are his fears, yeah. And what he does is exactly old three. He shows his ideas, but he also shows his inner, uh, movements. If you um, especially regard his books, which is my my favorite book of, um, from him, um, um, Grace and Grit. Wonderful. Yeah, this stage is a stage where you don't hide anymore your personal experience, but you you use it as an example for what you want to 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 get out into the world, you know, you don't make the separation from private to learn it something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think he he does that more and more. Yeah, so very good example of O three. <laughs> and we both too, aren't we? So <laughs> yes, in some way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here we have a level old four, Albert Schweitzer, um, a priest. And he was a man who had several communities. Um, the most famous one uh, is certainly the one he led in Africa. And um, he might be as well a good example to, um, to understand what Old Four is about. His welfare and the welfare of the community. And the one doesn't work without the other. That's interesting because I remember that he was good in playing the violin. So that's something which is really First of all, for yourself, when you come to the level when it's coming, you know, when it's giving you this uh, joy of expressing music, and then it's doing something for the others too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good example. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't feel any, any joy from uh, playing, the audience won't be uh, connected to it or won't be reached. Yeah. Yeah. Here we have the 14th Dalai Lama at level 05, a sage. And uh, so he follows his path, not knowing where it leads. Mm.
And I think he follows it uh, both as a person, as well as uh, being the leader of a, a religion. Yeah. And in the page, he loves to make contact with the world. <laughs> And his way of being, we, we, I think everybody knows it, his emanation, that's to be confident without knowing where it leads and doing and being there, you know, that's a, a good example for that, yeah. Yeah. So we have another old five, Mahatma Gandhi, a warrior. also with impatience and self-deprecation. Mm, yeah. We it's... need to say that we will uh, do another video about this uh, fears, which are expressed by, in this case, impatience and self-deprecation, because people mm -hmm. who don't know about it first here, they cannot know what that is, but it's what comes out of your basic fears. Uh, no? mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we have to do that. <laughs> yeah. And we have old seven. Osho. Um, as I mentioned, we, we had, why didn't I show old six like um, Nelson Mandela? Don't know. Um, but you talked about him, so it's fine too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Osho is old seven, and uh, the poet named Rainer Maria Rilke, which who is maybe uh, known, is old seven too. There are not very many examples of old seven because usually the the very high soul ages. Um, aren't so keen about being famous. So we, it's not so easy to pick up persons uh, who are known by everybody. <laughs> yeah. I heard, I think you said that, that often in India, these very poor old men who are living on the streets begging, that mm -hmm. they often are very old age. Yes, uh, they can be, um, but there might be also uh, very young souls, could also be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and they are not famous at all. And they're giving so much and hopefully receiving much as well. Yeah, I can't say so much about L7. Sorry. <laughs> but you have a view where we will go in some hundred years, where we will arrive. So in this um, system, what happens when you have done all the cycles? Um, there are uh, several uh, planes in the astral world and uh, the souls um, who are uh, in the incarnation cycle uh, move between the uh, second astral ter territory and the, and the earth. And um, your soul is a fragment of a bigger entity called soul family. And um, as you're watching us, you might be a mature or soul, um, a mature or old soul. And uh, so um, a part of your soul family um, might be through with the incarnation cycle. And these souls are moving to the third uh, phase. The third plane of the astral territory. 
and they are helping the others energetically. And if all the souls of one soul family has crossed the incarnation cycle, the energy um, has so much increased that uh, they like jump to the causal plane. And there uh, they stay connected a bit with the world because they have tasks uh, which has something to do with teaching. And uh, the entity of uh, the entity Bada Hasselmann has asked about all these things is an entity on the corner, uh, causal plane. Like the, the entity I ask, I'm uh, asking for information as well. But you ask a different entity. That's not that on the third level, there is only one, let's say, God or somebody who knows everything. But you say that this is the place where all the so families who have done the Earth cycle are sort of units there. And uh, these units then got into contact with who wants to get into contact with them, or even, I don't know, if they look for contact themselves. And they, they look for contact and they they are looking for, uh, for people that match mm -hmm. in uh, several ways. And um, I myself have um, contact to uh, my, uh, my causal source, and I have uh, the connection to the source of Vada Hasselmann as, as well. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. So what can we um, find as a conclusion? Why is it so important? I feel that it's very important to know about these things, no? Mm -hmm. Why is it so important? Uh, I see you are going on with um, with a slide, so we will do that. No, no, no. Oh, it's uh, not so not so important. Okay. Back again. <laughs> okay. So the question: Why why is it important? Why why people? What is the benefit for them to know about their? elements in the soul matrix. The soul matrix is the thing which is behind you on the, on the wall. Uh, with, we have now talked about the soul roles and the soul ages, but as you see, there is many uh, other things like the mode, the mentality, the center, and so on. You know, there are many more aspects. And the soul is choosing for, for a life, maybe this life, your life, of every little column, certain elements, you know, it's not that you have all of them, just one, maybe in another life, some, some of them you can change, but the, as I've understood you right, the role is always the same for this. Yeah, for the role is always the same and the path of the, of the soul, which is the bottom line. Um, this combination uh, are your basic energies uh, and they are fixed um, through the whole incarnation cycle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the soul age mm -hmm. increases and, and all the other elements are mixed up and changed in every life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why, why is it important to know about it? Mm -hmm. um, I think if you know your matrix, your energy combination, you understand yourself much better. It's like a, you're looking in a mirror, but it's a magic mirror because this mirror shows your beauty and your rightness. <laughs> um, it shows how you are meant to be. And it teaches you that you are meant to be exactly the way you are and gives the evidence of it. Yeah. And on the second hand, you 
understand others much better. Yes. And you can worship their individually and their choices much better and the choices of their soul. Mm -hmm. But Heidi wanted to. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's exactly what you say. You can understand yourself you're much better. You understand that what you maybe didn't like in yourself because it didn't fit into your own expectations or expectations of um, the society, you can understand, oh, but I'm not meant to be like this. I'm meant to be different and exactly as you are. And this brings, at least to me, it was like this, brings a big relief ah, oh, I don't have to fight that, but it's just, that's how I'm meant to be. And now I'm paying more attention to that, how mm -hmm. this expresses this, this feature, you know, in, in my life. And then I can maybe choose to express it a little bit better or mm -hmm. a little bit in a different way. But before I only fought against, no, 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 I don't want to be that, you know. And this is obviously a, a lost fight you know you you cannot lose the fight against yourself yeah, so it's it it gives much better direction to to the own development mm -hmm. if you are interested in in knowing what where you are going where you are at and <laughs> what is coming i'm i'm certain that many people do, are not interested in it and that's fine too they just live it you live your soul and your soul lives you anyway. So if you know your matrix or not, uh, at this point, it's all the same. You do it anyway. But if you are curious to uh, to get to know more or you reflect yourself in another way or take yourself as you are and love yourself as you are, it is a very helpful means. Yeah, exactly. So Mayun, I think uh, we are through the old souls now. No? Mm -hmm. So I would invite you to tell a little bit people about what you are doing. You obviously are concerned with the matrix. <laughs> and uh, invite them to connect with you. Yeah, first I want to uh, invite you to uh, post questions about this uh, on the Wisdom Factory um, site. And uh, we would love to hear from you and um, is, uh, if it's possible, answer, surely. Um, so what I do is um, I... Um, um, I find out the soul matrices of people and I coach them. Um, so I work with the people on it. I do seminars and I love doing constellation work as you per perhaps know um, through the family constellation work and I um, mingled the, my work with the archetypes of the soul with the constellation works and do spiritual constellations um, with that. I love that. So, ah, touching. And uh, also, I myself learn so much through that. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. And also um, help business people and, and companies to uh, develop their um, leaders with a special um, emotional competence for leaders. Um, and if I'm allowed to do that based on the archetypes of the soul. Mm -hmm. Very good, yeah. We need leaders who are a little bit more conscious and developed no? about what their blind uh, spots are and what their qualities are and everything, yeah. Only but your and all souls are, would be interested in that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and your website, can you name it? Yeah, I have two websites. My first one is uh, uh, mly-spirit.de -E, and the second one is mli-business.de D I D E. 
D E uh, D E in German it stands for Germany, but in English we say D E. Okay, so I hope they get it. Otherwise, Marion Lockhart and uh, on the website the wisdomfactory.net I link to all her websites. Yeah, and you will easily find me in Google. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it was wonderful, and I'm looking forward to the next session we will be doing about the fears. Yeah, so do I, Heidi. I'm looking forward to it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye to all you. <laughs>